Here we go. Hello, and this is Terry with Futures IO, and as always, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Now, it's my pleasure to welcome back Elon Levy Mayer for today's webinar, Ask Me Anything, Brokerage and Platform Questions. If you have a question, please feel free to type it into the questions box and we'll answer it throughout the webinar. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the webinar. And as always, please feel free to share, comment, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. For trading news, events, and information, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter using at Futures.io. And now, without further delay, I'll hand it over to Elon, and you'll get the pop-up again to share your screen. All right, looking good. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, my plan is to make it somewhat of an informal webinar and answer questions along the way, but I'll try to keep it still with a structure. I hope everybody had a good trading day and uh, volatility has definitely been quite high, to say the least. Here's what I'm going to go over this webinar. I'm going to talk about the pricing and commissions and other factors that you need to understand. Make sure that when you shop, you compare apples to apples. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about exchange hosted servers because we're getting a lot of inquiries from uh, different clients about algo trading and uh, putting their server in the exchange, etc. Also, if you're a high volume trader, we're going to discuss uh, what is a CME membership? Is it really worth it? And as you can see, the rest of the topic, uh, a little bit clearing arrangements for option sellers, uh, day traders, swing traders. Uh, what's the scoop with the designing algorithm and auto trading? I want to touch base on a couple of platforms that I like. One of them is relatively new. Talk a little bit about our lowest rates and margins and uh, why the lowest day trading margins are not always the best thing. And then hopefully, as we go throughout it, uh, answer questions that will be beneficial for everybody and go from there. So uh, let's get started. And as always, uh, this business that we're in, futures trading, is quite risky. I think the leverage uh, really is a double-edged sword that can help you, that can hurt you, and it makes trading even riskier than other instruments. That being said, risk and opportunities go hand in hand. Uh, and that's why people are trying to do what we do. So again, what I'm going to share here in this webinar is my personal opinion. Uh, the opinions that I share are such are opinions and opinions only. Futures trading is risky and not suitable, suitable for everyone and past performance is not indicative of futures results. So real quick, you can see on, on the slides right here who is keen on trading and I can tell you all kinds of stories when we first started and we were the cheapest brokerage out there at $22 a round turn back in 1998. But uh, I'll save you those stories. And I'm really going to get down to the to the nitty gritty, as they say. Uh, <clears throat> so, pricing commissions. What's the what's the story there? And what I want to do here is I want to get my uh, web browser going on. So give me a second. And let's talk about commissions and margins. And again. I think the futures industry is very different uh, compared to stocks and maybe bonds. You get so many different type of traders with different needs and the commissions that we offer, uh, we try to really customize it. So some people may say, hey, why don't you just tell me what the commission is right away? Well, we do. We have a base structure and you can see it right there on our website. And even when you look at the website and you look at the commission, you need to understand uh what are commissions made of there's obviously the first part is uh the actual commission then you got you got uh, the part that is the exchange fees that will vary per market okay then we got platform fee which is you know not always uh you don't always have a platform fee but some platforms will have a platform fee per trade you have the nfa that is also per trade and then you may have some monthly costs around it. The monthly cost will be the data feed, if you're professional or non-professional. You may have a monthly cost that relates to the actual platform. And there's two platforms that I really like that, uh, actually there's more than two, but 
there's two that I really like that are a free platform that I'm going to share and show you on our website. So that's what makes up the commission. So I believe that for um, an experienced trader, the best way to ask about commission is to really ask, what is my commission? Forget about the exchange fees. Uh, forget about everything else. What is my, my commission? And then you yourself uh, can add the exchange fees, can add the, the NFA fees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And commissions are a function of a few things. How much help you need from the broker, what platform you use, how active you are, and what type of volume you use, you, you trade. And I may sound repetitious throughout this uh, webinar, but I, I really think that one of our strengths is that we don't look at everybody as one size fit all. And we have traders here that really pay in cents plus exchange fees and NFA fees because they trade very large volume. And we have traders here that will, you know, pay in tens of dollars because they need full service or broker assist, they need help, they need advice. So my recommendation is reach out, see who's the broker on the other side, describe to him what type of trading you look to do, uh, what platform you have in mind, if you have one in mind, what is the most important thing for you as a trader, and let that broker uh, customize a pricing plan for you. But again, understand that there is, that when you shop around for commission, either ask for commission plus fees, and even better off, you can always ask, what is my total round turn to trade one mini S&P, one buy and one sell? Because I know there's some brokers that will have what we call hidden fees or transaction fees. So you wanna get the full, full picture. Uh, so talking about pricing, I'm gonna go down to uh, what we call, I've been asked by people uh, if it's worth it to get a CME membership. And a C mem membership is worth it if you're a high volume trader. And the way that goes is if you look at the, at the pricing on your statement, when you trade one mini S&P, you'll see the commission. Uh, let's say in this case, hmm, let's think about it. Let's say the mini S&P. So let's say you see a commission of uh, uh, 99 cents a side. And then you'll see an exchange fee, which is one, 118 aside, and then you'll see the NSA fees of two cents aside. You want to look to see if there's any other fees on top of it. Is it a platform fee? Is it a transaction fee? What's in there? Now, what does the CME exchange membership does? And you have two ways to go about it. And the most common way is to lease a seat. Is it will reduce in this specific example the dollar and 18 aside that the CME charges to possibly 60 cents aside in some cases even lower, in some cases even higher, depending on the type of lease that you uh, are uh, using and buying. And that means that you will pay uh, a monthly fee, anywhere from $1,500 and above, but in return, you're really reducing your round turn commissions by more than a dollar, sometimes a dollar is 20. So the math is very simple. If you trade more than 2,500 round turns a month on a consistent basis, it is very worth it, worthy for you to call in, ask about CME membership, and get a little bit of an idea of uh, how to go about it. We can help you with that. We can connect you with the right people at the CME and see if it really makes sense to you or not. Okay. And that brings me to another topic, which is the exchange hosted servers. And I think from the stock side, from the equity side, in the past years, we heard about how uh, real estate in New York by the New York Stock Exchange is uh, going for much higher because algo trade firms are buying the property over there and they're trying to get as close as possible to the exchange. I don't necessarily think it's applicable for the futures market. Uh, in my opinion, you can go, again, if you want an exchange server, we can help you with that. We will be able to get you a, a server right at the exchange and we'll give you a quote. It also runs a few hundred dollars a month. But I think that you can go and use a, a service like Amazon Web Service or the Google Web Service and get a really fast machine and require for that machine to be in Chicago. And unless you're a mega, mega professional trader that's really looking for that, uh, whatever you wanna call it, the split, split second, I don't think it's gonna make a difference. 
And again, in the futures business, with the way the bid and the ask are working at the exchange, I think the exchange hosted servers are applicable maybe for 0.01% of the traders out there. So uh, that's what's talking about the exchange hosted server. And if you do have questions, uh, let me know while I'm speaking. I'll take a little breather and uh, see if there's any specific questions that I can answer. And since we just spoke about hosting a server at the exchange, or in this case, I recommend using the Amazon web servers if you really need that, uh, we can start talking about algo and auto trading and what's going on. It's a big buzzword out there and uh, we're getting more and more clients that do have automated trading. And depending on your level of experience and how long you've traded and your level of computer savviness and the know-how and basic programming, uh, algo design or algo trading may be a good thing. And I'll tell you what I think the advantages are and what the disadvantages are. Uh, advantages, once you put something in an automated trading, you take away the emotions and you really force yourself into much more discipline. Uh, on the flip side, I think that a good trader is probably better than most algos out there. The only problem is that there are not that many good traders, to be honest. Uh, most traders allow, if it's either uh, greed, fear, indecisiveness, whatever it may be to interfere with their trading decisions. And as most of you know, a lot of us can do very well in demo and simulated mode, but when it comes to real trading, those emotions take over. So the algo trading is there, there is auto trading. We also have uh, quite a bit of systems that we display on our website and I'm gonna drag it right now real quick and show you where you can see that. And we can help you design and implement your own algo. If you have an idea and a thought, we can tell you which platforms we think are suitable for algo design. We can give you some uh, insight into what to look out for when you first start with it, because trust me, about, I wanna say 12 years ago, I designed my own system on CQG. And I back tested it and I optimized it and I thought that's it. I'm, I think I'm gonna retire and go to the Bahamas and sit on the beach somewhere and just trade. I just need a really good, stable, fast internet connection. And luckily for me, I spoke to somebody at CQG, which is my preferred uh, trading platform, an experienced uh, trade system specialist who gave me some in and outs of what to learn from about how most people over optimize about forward testing and a few other things that one should do before they think they hit the, the crystal ball. So we do know quite a bit here uh, about uh, trading, about algo design, and we can help you. We've helped more than a few people. Uh, what I'm showing you right now is on our system, on our, excuse me, on our website on Canon Trading, the iSystems uh, library of many different systems uh, that are designed by different professionals that are really algo trading. And if you decide you like one, you open an account and fund it, we can set you up to start, stop, uh, use those systems. When you click on a system, let me see one that I actually like and I've been into a while. So let's say this Newton DAO, the mini DAO. When you click on the, on the menu, it will show you quite a bit of information, uh, the monthly cost, if it's an intraday system, what product? A lot of back testing information, but what I really like about this iSystems uh, platform is that it will show you, like right here, all the white, those are back testing. Then all of a sudden, I hope you can see that, you see different color, you see like a little beige color. That means this is forward testing, meaning the system was given to us, we put it on our servers and the developer cannot change anything about the, the parameter, parameters and we're letting it run. Green is live trading. So what I tell my clients is when I come to evaluate systems, I wanna see that the green uh, or the beige have correlations to what the system has done in back testing. And I start you know, using some criteria to filter out the systems and try to pick a few that I like. Uh, another word on the, in the topic of uh, systems trading 
is I highly recommend that if you are interested is to talk to somebody about understanding what's the downfall, what's the good side, and if possible, to try to diversify by having more than one specific system that you are trading. Okay. Hey, uh, well, I have a couple yeah. guys with some questions on this email. Of course. Let me take a quick pause so I can answer some questions. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, he says, I thought the CME lease was around $1,000 for six months to trade the ES. Those, those prices will change. Those prices change, and it's on a, it really it's like a bid and ask, meaning it depends on the supply and demand. Okay. How much demand there is. So it, it, today it may be one price. Uh, in six months from now, it may be another price. And what happens is when we get a call or somebody is interested and we find out that it actually makes sense, we call the exchange together. We need to find out what the specific market, in this case the ES, and then we can get a quote that is, that is a, a recent quote. Uh, the last time I've done it was a few months ago. And if I recall correctly, it was around 1500 per month. Okay. If, if it's possible to get one for a thousand dollars for six months, that's great, and that means that the prices went down. But I will have to double check that with the exchange. Okay. Um, can a few traders in a club or community pull their trades together for one seat and benefit from a lower commission? That's a great question. That's a great question. I know that you can pull your funds together. It just takes more paperwork on the clearinghouse side on the new account opening. But I believe that you can. I believe that you can go and lease a seat uh, as an organization, you probably have to form an LLC or a partnership or whatever it may be. And then depending on the number of traders, I think I think it's actually doable. I think it's doable, but again, I would have to call the exchange, get to the right person, and trust me, that's not something that's done in five minutes. It's probably over a couple of days back and forth, and they ask all kind of questions, and then we get down to the bottom line and get an answer. Is it yes or no? My instinct says it's possible. But then you have to worry about also tax implications between the traders themselves. Uh, how are you going to allocate that specific account? Who's going to trade it? Okay. All right, that looks like it for now. Okay, good. Good. I mean, those those are great, uh, great, great questions. And I do want to take a quick, quick, small break here from the slideshow for a minute and go back to our website. And I wanna show you a few tools that you can utilize after the webinar because I'm sure I'll forget some stuff. And you may be listening right now and all of a sudden you'll have a question later that you forgot. So during business hours, we do have a live chat that you're more than welcome to go on it and ask questions. If you want a commission quote, just go to the front page and scroll down and where it says, we will match or beat any competitor's commission rate, click on it. Fill out the short form, and you will get a, an answer in a matter of 24 hours or one business day. And I do pride myself and our brokers here that we're very honest and very blunt. And there's been a couple of times that I we got a commission request to match a bid, and I did my homework and talked to who I needed to talk, and I told the prospective client, we will not be able to match or beat your current commission, but that's a rarity. 99% of the time we are, and we're just we, – Pretty much discuss the facts, the, the round turns, the volume, the account size, the needs of that trader, and we go from there. Uh, another, I want to show a few other really excellent tools that we offer. Uh, one is you can go into our website under education, and there's a, more than a few good articles, that are original content that we wrote ourselves here in Canon. Some of them written by other people, like uh, the 25 Proven Strategies by the CME Group. But a lot of good educational information for day traders, swing traders, uh, seasonal traders, option traders. So I recommend exploring it. And then last but not least, what I really like is our daily blog. And you can go right here where it says Future Brokerage Updates. Also under Education, Daily Support and Resistance Levels. That blog goes out via email uh, every day, and we share all kind of information. Like today, we share that it's rollover, that it's time to probably start trading the March contract on the mini S&P. Uh, we'll share any charts that are uh, of interest at that point. 
And more important, we'll put out daily support and resistance levels for the next day for the what I consider the top 12 markets. Uh, and we'll post, put it there on the website, as well as what economic reports are coming up uh, the next day. Uh, great idea, in my opinion, to sign up for the blog, even if you're not looking to become a client at any time, because you'll find out about rollover, you'll find out that the DAX just extended trading hours a few days ago. Uh, next week, we'll publish Christmas trading hours. Uh, if uh, there's limit moves in the market or anything of importance, we will share that as well on the blog. And going back to <clears throat> the system trading and the algo design, we actually started uh, something new. It's called follow the leader. And if you remember, I mentioned earlier that I think that a really good trader is probably better than any system. And we are looking for good traders. We try to screen good, good traders because we're starting a service that's called Follow the Leader, which means that we'll see different traders. You'll be able to see their stats, what performance they have. And if you like how they trade, you can choose to echo them or to mimic them, uh, subscribe to their trading, and you'll be following their trades. So this is also something that we just uh, started. And like I mentioned in the beginning, we've been here since 1988. Uh, I have myself have 20 years of experience. Uh, two of my colleagues actually have more experience than I do. And we've all, we all been, been in the business for a while, and we really focus on trying to match the best service and technology for what uh, this prospective client wants. I do want to talk real quick about a new platform that's uh, coming up. It's called Orion. And some of you may have heard about it. Uh, I met with the developer, the owner, and I was impressed. You can trade the different asset classes from the same platform by connecting to different brokers. But just not that. It's, a, it's an easy, uh, very configurable trading, system, trading platform that has a lot of features. And I want to show a quick highlight. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Uh, I was impressed. They have all, all type of very powerful order types, uh, smart trailing stops, breakouts, conditional orders, and more. Uh, interesting anal analytical tools and reporting, and also automated trading. Uh, so we were talking about algo and algo design. Uh, there's a big difference between actually designing a system. Uh, if MACD does this and the RSI does this, and we got a triangle and a sending triangle, buy. Okay, that's nice. Now, how do you put it to actually trade in live? Obviously, you want to test it in demo mode first, but how do you make a trade? So the Orion has more than a few uh, built-in strategies that you can configure and kind of have a shortcut as it comes to automated trading. So I wanted to show, talk about that. Uh, my, my favorite platform for 90% of the traders out there is uh, the E-Dash Futures International. And this is what, it's a white label of the GAIN capital trading platform, what we used to call OEC, uh, Open eCry back in the days. I think it's a really nice platform. You can do option spreads, day trading, uh, iceberg, uh, you know, simple automated strategies, meaning buy me three, sell two at this level, put a trailing stop at that level. Uh, you get news, you get the charts, and it is a free platform. Uh, so not sure what most of you are trading with, but I think for, like I said, for majority of traders, that is my preferred platform. If you're really looking for leverage and really like to day trader and really max it out, which is not something I personally recommend, I like the Shogun Trade Executor, which is a white label of the Transact platform. This is where we offer the best day trading margins. Uh, for example, we can offer you $2,000 for the DAX contract. Uh, 500 for the mini S&P, 1,000 for crude oil, 500 for the bonds, 500 for the currencies. So really aggressive day trading margin. It's a very nice, uh, fast day trading platform, and you can sign up for a demo on our website. It comes with the Sierra charts, and if you become a client and trade more than 10 round turns, you get Sierra for free. Uh, so those are some of my favorite platforms. Now, if you're a professional, uh, I'm very biased. I myself use CQG. I actually have more than a few automated systems that are running on CQG, but also as a broker, I need a lot of the tools that they offer for 
options, time and sales, advanced charting, and, and much, much more. Um, so at this point, oh, I do want to show one more thing that I promised to offer everybody in the, in the webinar. And this is, we have a few videos that we put together that our brokers put together. And let me see if I can copy the link and send it to everybody via the, via the messenger. So yes, I'm going to send this link right now. And you can sign up to get videos that we put together about support and resistance, uh, how to identify them, about different tools when you trade with fear and greed and how to recognize fear and greed in the market. Uh, and you can sign up for those videos, series of videos. Let me go ahead and send it. Uh, okay, I'm going to send it to the organizer and hopefully Terry can send it to everybody else. And at this point, if you have any questions, I do have a question. Uh, let's see. As a futures bro broker, what would you suggest? What's the number one thing that you would like a new client to understand right off the top? That they have to start slow. That what they're going to know in three months is so much more than what they know right now. And in three months, they do not want to be broke with no account to trade. So start slow. Find a broker that will talk to you and listen to you and educate you. And if you're a new client that's starting to trade futures, even if you traded stocks before, don't don't worry so much about 25 cents here or there or if the margin is 500 or 700. Talk to somebody who can really shorten your learning curve and give you a better chance to succeed in this tough business. Okay. I've seen too many people that go in, start in, and they just jump in head first, and a week later that account is done. And we don't, we do not like it. We don't like to see people lose money. Uh, we don't like it because as brokers, we need you guys to succeed. We need our clients to do well. It may not sound like it or feel like it to you as a as a client, but we do want your best interest. We need you to do well and be a client for a long time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does Rhythmic have better execution latencies than CQG for trading ES on the CME? I don't think so, but that's a personal opinion. I don't think so. I think both Rhythmic and CQG are excellent. Uh, I think they have their own advantages when it comes to different aspects, if it's automated trading, if it's uh, other things. But I think as far as the latency, no. I think that will depend on, on your speed, how fast your computer is, where you're located, and what type of trading you do. And again, I will ask anybody that talks to me about it, is it really matter that you have a 0 0.02 uh, millisecond faster? If you're going and selling the, the S&P at 26.7 and you're putting a three-point stop and you're looking for a six-point target? No. If you're looking to try and make a quarter point back and forth, back and forth many, many times, maybe it has any relevancy, but I'll, I'll say, okay, show me that you can actually make it because I've never seen anybody makes it buying the bid and selling the ask, and I don't care how fast of a computer they have. I don't think it's a viable strategy. Okay. Uh, are they able to use Ninja Trader with a uh, Canon? Yes and no. I'll start with the no. If you're a new client and you just started with Ninja Trader, we're not able to accommodate you. Ninja Trader was first a software company, and then they became a brokerage house. And I respect Ninja Trader and, the, and their software. When they became a brokerage house, they mentioned that if you have a lifetime license for Ninja before, I want to say July 2014, you can still trade with any broker that you want. So if you have a lifetime license with Ninja, you can trade with us if you got it before 2014. If not, most probably you don't. That being said, sometimes with countries like Canada and Australia where Ninja may or may not be able to deal with those clients directly, uh, we are able to. But again, I will double check with our brokers here specifically, each case specifically. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Where can where can I get the best real time tick data for various main markets? For various meat markets? Main markets, sorry. Main markets, like okay, like the main markets. I think a lot of those uh, services will do it. Meaning we can provide you some of that for free via either transact or gain capital, where the data comes in for free as a client. If you're looking to buy historical data, like going back a few years, I would recommend either CQG or bar chart. Okay. Uh, how is trade station data for real time tick data? Sorry. Can we repeat the question? How is trade station data for real time tick? So I'm not part of trade station. They're a competition of us. Uh, Again, a company that's been around in business for a while. They do a lot of great things, and their back testing tool is good. I do not use TradeStation directly. I do have it running in our office for one of the automated systems that we monitor. Uh, I believe it seems to be fine. It seems to be to be fine, but what I hear from some clients that open with us a second account or transfer from TradeStation is they like the speed and the lower day trading margins that we're able to offer. But again, I'm not able to speak on behalf of TradeStation. Okay. Uh, CQG data feed does not have a continuous futures chart. I'm trying to use it with Motive Wave. No, his, sorry, okay, go. There is, there is continuous charts and let me, you just have to find out the, the exact symbol that the front end, because you have to distinguish between CQG data CQG platform and which front end you do. Like, uh, so the platform that he may use may have a different, different uh, for the... command or so, or so exactly symbol for the continuous. Like here it is, as you can see, it says mini NASDAQ equalized active daily continuation. All I have to do is I type in the symbol and then I do ADC on my chart and boom, it gives me the continuous. Uh, so CQG definitely has continuous data, goes back years, I have, six years of uh, intraday data, and I can go back, you know, for as long as the contract lies for other, you know, except for intraday. So they do, just double check and ask. Some of them, like if you want to say Sierra charts, you have to put the at symbol before the symbol. Uh, also in Sierra chart, if you go into chart settings, uh, there's a place where you can specify that you want the continuous data. So every little different front end will have their little mechanism of uh, showing continuous versus not continuous. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I hear that futures are better. 24 hour trading and no SEC sell stops. I think I, I, I can relate to what uh, the visitor is uh, referring to. But again, in this case, I'm not a stock broker. I'm a commodities broker, a futures trader. Uh, so I'm biased towards futures. I think futures are the real stuff. There's no different rules that prohibit you to go short or when to go short or how to go short. That being said, I think that futures are also a little bit more risky with the leverage that is involved. But if I'm a trader, uh, and I'm a broker first, so I'm not a trader first, but I'm a broker first. But if I'm a trader and I have enough risk capital, I would probably prefer futures over stocks and perhaps have a mix of the two. Maybe look at stocks for longer term trading and use futures for the shorter term. But everybody is different. Okay. Uh, all right, guys, if you have any more questions, please start typing them. Let me see. If there is one thing that I can, uh, not one thing, but something important that I have to share with, with prospects and people who are listening to this webinar is find a broker that can really be your teammate. And that doesn't matter that if you're trading by yourself all the time, the broker, you're not there to find a broker that's gonna tell you buy, sell, or this market is going up or down. But a broker that can shorten your learning curve, if, it's, if you're talking about designing an algorithm system, if you're talking about selling options, uh, if you're looking at seasonal trading or tick data, whatever it is, a good broker is a very important resource because we talk to clients all, all the time. 
we talk to clients all the time and we understand what's going on in the business and instead of you doing hours of work, we can really shorten the curve for you and, and help you out. So think of a broker as somebody who's on your side, on your team, and can help you find what you're looking for. Okay. Um, for a new client, what would be, I, I know this is usually a loaded question, but for a new client, what would be the minimum account size that you would say would be realistic to survive, to be able to survive that initial trading? I know that you can open it with a, a low amount, but realistic right really right our, our lowest our lowest minimum to open an account is 2500 i don't think it will actually answer the question that was asked because i don't think it's realistic to try yes. to trade with 2500 so depending on the style of trading that you're looking to do if you're a day trader i think you should start at least with five to ten thousand and try to really limit yourself on a daily loss limit if you're a swing trader i believe that you're looking more towards the 20 25 thousand if you're looking to sell options, again, it should be at least around 15, 20,000. Uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot try with smaller amounts, but just understand that it's gonna put you in a very tight spot. Okay. Uh... And FYI, talking about selling options, the greatest advice I can give option sellers is option selling has a lot of different advantages to it. But if you're selling it completely naked, you're just waiting for that black swan event to happen. It can happen in next month, it can happen in five years, but when it happens, it can wipe you out. If you really want to succeed in selling options, try to sell spreads. Sell vertical call spreads, vertical put spreads, at least you know you have protection. If the market, you know, natural gas a few weeks ago exploded overnight and wiped out some uh, big CTA, I don't know if you guys heard about it in the news, if you're in a spread, it's going to hurt you, but it's not going to kill you. Uh, February 5th or 6th, whenever it was, when the stock market was down over 15% overnight, if you're naked, you're done. If you're on the wrong side, you're done. If you're in a spread, you have a chance to make it. So again, this is my personal opinion, but I believe that if you sell in options, selling option spreads is superior to selling naked options. Okay. Are options worth it for day traders or just swing traders? I think for both. Because some I've seen some of my client, our clients that are day traders, but they'll utilize sometimes the weekly options or the Monday or Wednesday expiration options, and sometimes they'll utilize it instead of using a tight stop. Because a lot of times you'll see that you actually went long or short and you're right on the market, but you know you got stopped out. But if you go in long the mini S and P, uh, and what's today? Today is a uh, today is Thursday. So you buy an option that expires tomorrow, it's Friday, that's pretty close to the money. You can use it almost as a stop. And again, if you go into the nitty gritty of it, we can explain to you exactly what's your maximum risk and what you need to look for. But yes, you can combine options and futures both with day tradings and swing tradings and on their own. Okay. Uh, selling options I hear is the best usually because they expire worthless. How do you feel about that versus buying options? It goes back to what I was talking about a few minutes ago. I think statistically it's true. Selling options offer a statistical edge. But like I said, when you sell options, if you're not diversified and if you don't have a game plan for protection, those crazy events do happen. And we call them black swan, but those events happen. You're selling a natural gas call option, you go to sleep on a Wednesday and all of a sudden you wake up in the next morning and you see that the market is up 10% and your account was blown up by the risk management. So my thought is selling option is a good strategy for experience, for people who understand what the risks are. But I would not, not, not that I would not, but I would usually like to sell option spreads. So if I'm selling a call on the natural gas, I will buy a call higher for cheaper. So I still get credit, but it protects me. It, it, at least I know what my maximum loss is. Now, keep in mind that, yes, buying options, if you just buy options all the time and you don't really know what's going on, most of them will expire worthless. But if you're using options and futures and combination, and for some cases you say, okay, I want to buy an option because my setup is X, Y, Z, and I don't feel as strong, but I think there's a good possibility that the market will go up, uh, that's not a bad strategy. Again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis, but it's like, 
Uh, I'll give you an example. If I look at a market, uh, let's say crude oil, uh, and I say, okay, I think, I don't think crude oil has a big chance to go to 45, but I think there's a 10, 15% chance it's going to go to 45. So I understand that I'm going to buy a couple of cheap puts that most likely will expire worthless. But if I am right, even though it's a smaller probability, the return will be quite a bit higher if there is a big move that goes there in that hypothetical example. So again, a good broker, an experienced broker can help you as a client, not, not to tell you crude's going up or crude's going down, but which option strategy should you use? Maybe you should sell a call and buy a put, or, or maybe you should uh, buy a put spread or whatever it may be, just using our experience to share with you. Okay. Uh, is Canon Trading a introducing broker? Canon Trading is an independent introducing broker. And the independent is a big keyword here. Uh, the industry is made up of clearing houses, independent introduce, introducing brokers, and guaranteed introducing brokers. So a guaranteed introducing broker can only work with clearing from ABC. So he can only offer you what ABC has. Uh, clearing from ABC can only offer you what ABC has. Canon Trading, which is an independent introducing broker, works with six different clearing houses. So you tell me that you need the triangle shaped and colored red. I'll find out which one of our clearing houses offers that and see if I can customize uh, the solution for you. So an independent introducing broker is, is an excellent choice for traders to be with because it really offers you flexibility with the clearing houses and it gives you somebody on your side when you deal with the clearing house. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the clearing firm for Canon? Sure. We clear with Dorman, Transact, Gain, Philip Capital, FC Stone, and Iron Beam. And if I forgot one, I apologize. Okay. Uh, is there a way to use iSystems to help me document my own algo trades and not have it shared with the world? I would need to know more information. It's probably a, a question for one-on-one -on -one outside of this webinar, but I will definitely need to find out more information about the question so I can give a good answer. But yes, you can share your algo on iSystem without sharing it with the world. You will have to disclose, though, the algo and the code for it with iSystem so they can plug it in on their servers and let it run and, sh and offer it to other clients. Okay. Is there, let's see, let me try to see if I'm, if I'm new to option trading, what would be a strategy you would say would be suitable for someone with zero knowledge of options? How's, oh. how's the way to get your foot in the door with options? The best way is call, talk to a few brokers, find one that you actually feel that you're on the same page that has time and patience for you, and let that broker help you understand different aspects of options trading. Should we just buy an option? Should we buy an option spread? What option spreads are suitable for this specific situation? And perhaps the broker can share with you the thought process and then an analytics that he or she does before recommending that specific strategy. So if you have zero knowledge about options, don't try to save money by going online. Start working with a broker and that broker will either help you transition into online once you know what you're doing or it may be that you're still going to like working with this broker and continue that way. Okay. Um, we're getting a little long on time, so I'm going to make this the last question. Um, if I have a successful algorithm running on TradeStation Ninja or any brokerage, can someone from that brokerage know about my algorithm? I, I don't think so, because I believe, or at least on our platform, the coding is done on your hard drive, on your personal computer. So for somebody to reverse engineer it, I am very, very, very skeptic on it. Now, if on the other side, you're putting that algo that is successful and you're sharing the code with the clearinghouse or the software company, then yes, there's, there's a scenario that that can happen. Uh, again, I'm not Ninja or TradeStation, but with the platforms we, we work with, uh, so the code if it's is running, done on your side. If it's running client side, odds are they cannot see it. Yeah. Okay. Client side, they should not be able to see it. No. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you for the webinar today, for uh, answering the questions, and for uh, spending some time with us this evening. 
I appreciate uh, you, Terry, and the folks at Futures.io for giving us the platform to talk about trading and our services. And I thank you guys for making, making it to this webinar after a trading day and uh, being patient with us and letting us share what we do and who we are here on the Futures.io platform. So I wish everybody great, happy holidays, good trading in the rest of December, and a great 2019. Thank you. Thank you. You too.